Let's talk. Top five misconceptions I had about the music business. Hey everybody, I'm back this week and I'm wearing my wrinkliest shirt. That's the kind of dedication I have. And today I want to talk to you about the top five misconceptions I had about the music business. Number one, venues pay you to entertain their customers. No. This one goes back a long time for me. When I was about 15 years old, I was at this restaurant and I'll never forget, this guy was there singing and playing guitar and playing some James Taylor songs and entertaining the people at the restaurant. And I thought, hey, this is great. I play guitar, I sing. Maybe a restaurant will pay me a few dollars, not very much, but a few dollars to entertain their customers. And in return, I'll make their business more appealing, which will make them more money, and they'll just cut me a little bit of that money. No. When you agree to do a concert for a business, what you're saying is, I will bring people to your business that wouldn't normally be there. That's the plan. They hire you so that you will hopefully tell your you know, 15 or 20 friends, hey, please come out and support us. And your friends, because they're your friends, hopefully will come out and support you. Or in my case, they will all be busy that night. And then no one will come out and the restaurant owner will look at you and look at their empty restaurant and look at you again and say, what are you doing? But you know, it's not totally our fault, musicians. Venue owners say things like, well, we need to see a picture and we need to hear a CD and see what you guys sound like. But that doesn't make any sense. Why would you want to hear our CD? Why would you want to see our photo if all you care about is our ability to bring customers to your venue? I mean, really, we could be the worst band in the world and maybe a hundred people come to laugh at us every time we play. But those hundred people would be great for the venue because there are a hundred eating and drinking people. So why even bother with the CD in the press kit? It doesn't make any sense. Now some venues actually do cut to the chase and just say, tell me how many people you can bring. And that's the right question because then you can give an honest answer and all of this embarrassment and awkwardness can be avoided. Now like every rule, there's a few exceptions. I did go to college with some musicians that played in jazz bands and those bands I think really did get paid a small fee to just be there and perform for the patrons that were already at those places. But that's different because it's jazz music and it's very upscale and those places really are paying just to say, oh, we have live jazz music. It's different when you're a guy with a guitar playing cover songs or even a rock band playing your own songs, that's even worse. Then they really expect that you're gonna bring your own people to the venue. Number two. Somebody's doing you a favor. When you're in the music business, you will meet all kinds of people with their hands out, ready to take your money. And they'll all say something kind of similar to you. Hey man, I heard you guys playing and like, your music's really cool. I do photos. Normally I charge like $600, but you know what? Since it's you guys, I'll do it for $5.75. Yeah, you know, just as a favor to you because I love your music. Or maybe it's the sound guy and he'll come up to you and say, oh man, you guys played a great set. I love that one song you did, the one that was like da -da 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 -da. Hey, listen, I have a recording of the music you guys were playing. I recorded it right off the soundboard and uh, I, I just really liked it. That's why I recorded it. So if you guys have 75 bucks, I'll be glad to give that to you. Everyone you meet wants to help you out and with very few exceptions, they are all just trying to take your money. Now, just like with the last rule, there are exceptions. For instance, I knew a guy, I think I can say his name. I knew a guy named Rick. He was a really nice guy that helped me out a lot. He didn't take a lot of money for anything that he did for us. He really genuinely was trying to help us out because he thought we were nice guys and we were talented. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. Number three, people care and want to hear about your band. No, no they don't. Man, this is the one that causes me the most embarrassment when I think back on my life. I think about all the times I've bothered people and told them about my band and promoted myself and just tried to push my music on the world. And I really hate that. Here's some things not to be. One, don't be that annoying guy at the party. Oh yeah, I'm in a band and uh, we're playing a show on the 22nd, you should definitely come out. They're like, oh yeah, yeah, I do play in a band, yeah, I play guitar. Everybody plays guitar and nobody cares. They do not want to hear about your band. 
Number two, don't go messaging people on the internet and say, oh, hey, check out my band. Don't go commenting in the YouTube comments, hey, check out my band. Because, I'm sorry, they don't care. And it's not because people are mean, it's just because there are so many bands trying to get their attention, they are absolutely inundated with people trying to tell them about their band. Everybody's got friends that are in bands. Everybody's got messages in their inbox on their social media from random bands they've never heard of. Everybody's sick of hearing about your band, so stop it. Just stop it. Number four, you should play as many shows as possible for exposure. Man, this is one that we really got wrong. But I mean, can you blame us? Everybody tells you the same thing. Everybody tells you, you need to play as much as possible because that's how people are gonna hear about your band. And yes, there's a little bit of truth to that, but it's a little bit of chicken and the egg. Yes, if you play a lot, you will get your name out there. But that's kind of like saying, if you want to be rich, you just got to get a lot of money. It's not that simple. You see, it is kind of like money, actually. Every time you play a show, you expend a certain amount of capital with your fans. Let me explain what I mean. Your fans are really only gonna go to a certain number of shows every year. No matter how much you love a band, you're not gonna go to every show they play. Playing once every week or even once every two weeks only makes sense if you have the fan base to support that. Let's say you only have 100 fans. Probably those fans really don't wanna hear you play more than once a month. Yes, maybe there's a tiny group of people that will come out and hear you every time you have a show. But if you wanna get 100 people out to hear you play, which is what most venues really want, then you really need to space your shows out because those same 100 people are not gonna to come to hear you play when they heard you two weeks ago. It's like offering to wash somebody's car after a thunderstorm. And you know, I gotta be honest, this is where we really messed up. We booked too many shows too close together. And after a while, those people who you thought would be at every show, you start calling them, and suddenly they have crazy excuses as to why they can't come. Hey man, I'm sorry, I'm taking my dog to get groomed that day. Oh no, dog, you know I would, but my car exploded, so I, I can't. When you start hearing excuses like this, you know you've booked too many shows. It's not your friend's fault, it's your fault. You booked yourself too close together, so you gotta back off and play as many shows as you can handle, no more. So what can you do to get exposure? Well, what you really should do, and I didn't do this, you should go to the concerts where other bands that are similar to yours are playing and go and promote your band there. Go talk to the people who are waiting in line. Give them a CD. Or if you can't give them a CD, let them listen in headphones. And if they like your music, give them a card. Let them go to your website. Let them download some of your music. You see, you want to get people into your music first, and then those people will want to come to your shows. You have to move past your small fan base built around your friends. You have to make actual fans. And if you don't do that, your band will fizzle out and it will die very quickly. Number five. Becoming musically successful will eventually make us financially successful. That never happened for me, and I don't think it happens for most people. Because let's be honest, no matter how much your band plays, you're really not even breaking even. Let's say your band sells 100 tickets at $10 a piece. And now let's say that for some reason you're able to keep 100% of those profits. Let's say that the venue is just working for the proceeds that they're gonna ring on the register that night. All right, now you got $1,000 for your whole band. Even if we don't factor in the most expensive cost, your gear, which is easily thousands of dollars for all of you, what is your time worth? How much time did you spend selling those tickets? How much gas did you use driving around to people who said they'd buy tickets from you? How many hours of your life went into practicing? What are you paying to have that EP recorded? How much did you pay the photographer for your press shots? All of these things add up, and I'm sure pretty soon, your thousand dollars really is gonna be zero dollars. You're in the negative numbers. You have not made any money. You've spent money to do this. And if you think you're gonna make money doing this, I would encourage you to think again. One of the biggest reasons I got out of performing is I started to realize the bands that I looked up to, the bands that were more successful than me, the people I thought who had pretty much made it, I would find out crazy things about them. Like this one band, they were cutting grass while they were touring. I mean, for real, they would have their band equipment in the trailer, and they would also have lawn mowers and leaf blowers in the trailer. No joke, they would cut grass on their tour to help make ends meet. They weren't super famous, but they were famous enough that they were on MTV, and yet they were still cutting grass because they couldn't make enough money just on their music alone. That wasn't the only story. I knew a band that had a huge following and seemed to be doing great, 
and then I find out that the lead singer is actually a waiter. So on the weekends, he's a rock star, and during the week, he's waiting tables. It didn't take me very long at all after I realized that to say, you know what? When I'm 30 years old, I don't wanna be waiting tables and trying to make it big as a rock star still. I knew right then and there, that wasn't for me. If that's your thing and that's what you wanna do, God bless you, but that's why I got out. Of course, there are exceptions to every rule. I mean, obviously there are musicians who have been able to make it as a performer, but for most of us, even if you give off the appearance of having made it as a performer, it ends up being just that, an appearance. All right, that's it. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think of this video and what are some things that you may be learned about the music business. If you like this video, please leave me a like and subscribe. I'll see you later. Bye.